Yo, shout out to SJF. You are the winner of last week's giveaway. We appreciate you taking the time to comment. Enjoy your book. What's good, comic fam? We're back on the mic to discuss the height, the hottest, the comic books that will define a generation of comic book collectors. And I'm at the table virtually with a good friend, Jem from Gem and Collectibles. How you doing, brother? I'm doing wonderful. Thanks for asking. How are you? I'm doing great, man, especially because every single week we're seeing more blue chip comics, classic comic books, those back issues that we all love to see make this list starting to appear more and more. Yeah, something about that just feels right, and I like it when it's a good mix of your classic blue chip, which means those classic characters that typically retain value, and these new generation heroes, these modern books, it's a good blend going on here. Hit that subscribe button, slap the like button, it'll enter you to win a giveaway and, you know, help support the show. I want to jump right into this list at number 10, Gem, with a comic that has not made the list yet. We call it the grandfather of comic books, comic fam. We're putting Marvel Comics issue number one right on the list. The comic book released by Timely Comics that would soon be changed to Marvel Mystery Comics and later to Marvel. This is the first Marvel comic book. Yeah, this is a true holy grail. A lot of people throw that term around for like Hulk 181s, AF-15s, but those are obtainable books. This is a book that is really almost unobtainable. First appearance of Human Torch, first appearance of Submariner outside of his brief appearance in Motion Pictures Funnies Weekly Issue Number 1. This is a mega grail, and we saw one hit the market. Let's take a look at the numbers. Specifically, let's take a look at the census count. There are only 30 universal graded copies on the CGC census. For comparison, there are only 41 Action Comics number one graded currently and 32 of Detective Comics 27. That's the first appearance of Superman and Batman, if you didn't know. Now, whenever this book comes to market, it is an event. And we saw back in 2019 a Windy City pedigree, a 9.4, breaking records at $1.26 million. I even had the opportunity to see in person at Chicago C2E2 with the Golden Age Guru the pay copy, a 9.0 with literally the writing on the cover in pencil of how much the artists and writers were paid. And it was what Lloyd Jaquette used to keep track. That book, oh my goodness, when these hit the market, everyone knows about about it and we're reporting today on not either of these we're talking about the nick cage version there was a 6.0 copy that was owned by nick cage that famously sold back in 2011 for seventy thousand dollars that same comic book has come back up and sold on the market for two hundred and eighty thousand dollars say that number again two hundred and eighty thousand dollars what a book. And this one's actually pretty fun because the original release had 80,000 copies hit the market before they sold out and went back to press that same week. So there's actually two different versions of this classic book. Well, so doing number ones was even profitable back then. <laughs> That's right. Just like, ooh, number nine on the list. I feel like it's long overdue. Yeah, it's really nice to see this book on the list. It's a book that when we say, what are the top 10 hottest books in the market? It's one that probably pops into mind. It's Fantastic Four, issue 48, the first appearance of Silver Surfer and Galactus. We know that these characters are coming to the MCU. It's only a matter of time. And the book has been on fire ever since the announcement that Disney and the MCU would be able to play with those IPs again. So let's take a look at some of these sales. So this week, a 9.8 white page copy sold in the Comic Link Summer Featured Auction for $42,500. It smashed the previous record of $37,200, and raw copies are selling at over $1,000 for mid-grade copies. Jim, I feel like this book has been on the minds of collectors for over five years. It's been a constant book being speculated on, and really, the trifecta keeps coming up in conversations. Look... Silver Surfer and Galactus are fan favorite characters, and I think this book has always done well regardless of what happened in the movies. Now, I still think that there's room to grow in on this book. You're going to see spikes when we get casting rumors, and you're going to see a huge spike once we get an actual trailer. So keep an eye on it. When mid-grade copies are exceeding $1,000, you know people are getting excited. 
Speaking of books that always do well, this is another copper modern book that has always been a valuable book, but we started to see crazy gains once this character got his own movie. Who are we talking about, Tom? We're talking about some McFarlane goodness, Amazing Spider-Man issue number 300. The first full appearance of Venom is moving up in value, and it's a combination of the movie that we are all anticipating, the fact that other comic books specifically symbiote focused comic books we're talking null donny cates king and black carnage are all moving in price pretty drastically pushing this book back up on our hot 10 list let's take a look at the numbers because we have a direct edition that we're talking about today it's not even a newsstand and we are seeing a high of what once was $3,500 for a 9.8 being shattered this week with a new $4,600 sale. Imagine what a newsstand copy would go for in today's market. We also see a Spidey 300 signed by both Stan Lee and Todd McFarlane graded at 9.8 selling for $6,200. Uh, significantly higher than the blue label. I just want you to put a pin in that number there because I want to kind of foreshadow something later we're going to discuss in this top 10. So stay tuned. See, this is why I can't buy key issues anymore. When I first got into this game about 2014, this book teetered between $900 and $1,100. Then when it started going for about $2,500, that's when I sold it. But $4,600 for this book? That's crazy. Oh, that's crazy, Jem. And we also had another record breaker this week of ASM 361, the first appearance of Carnage. That newsstand copy has officially hit $700. Man, $700. That book keeps growing, too. I think the last time we talked about it, it was like six to six fifty. That's right. Ooh. And number seven on this list, Ms. Marvel. Staying strong, but moving down. Yeah, so Miss Marvel's down a little bit. This is issue 17, second print variant, first uh, cover appearance of Kamala Khan, a.k.a. Miss Marvel, second uh, cameo appearance. And I feel like I'm talking about this book on every list, but that's because there's things happening in the market that are warranting this comic to be talked about. Let's look at these prices. So we know that a 9.8 has an all-time high of $3,500, but we saw a strong sale for $2,900 in 9.8 this week. There haven't been that many copies for sale, but even at $2,900, that's doing much better than its 2019 average of only $1,500. What's funny is that all new Marvel Now Point One has been creeping back up. Even with all the circulating rumors about this supposed warehouse stash, we're starting to see some movement in that book as well. The regular cover broke four digits, coming in at $1,000 and a 9.8. I think because we have already seen interest start to move between comics for this particular character, it's going to be intriguing to watch what happens with the newsstands of these appearances because although collectively we are looking at issue 17 the second print as like the most coveted version of this key appearance issue 14 although just a cameo does have a newsstand version to it that is so staggeringly low that that may be the dark horse of this batch All right, so that's Kamala Khan, and you know who's not too far behind. We're talking about those next generation heroes, Jim. At the list at number six, we have Amazing Fantasy 15, the first appearance of Amadeus Cho. Now, last week, we were chatting about a raw newsstand hitting $1,200. Staggering gains on a book that a lot of people are interested in. Now, this week, we are actually putting the... Cover a direct market copy at the list because we are seeing new records. It has officially broken at 9.8, the $1,000 barrier. Are the rumors true? Is Marvel going to be introducing the champions, bringing Miles Morales, Kamala Khan, Amadeus Cho, Nova into a series, further pushing this low 14,000 printed comic book spec to new grounds? I'm betting so but we'll be here to let you know about it. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and let's chat about another character that we got to be following. We're talking about number five on the list, Vengeance number one, the first appearance of Miss America or America Chavez. But we're talking about the one out of 15 ratio by Mike Diodato. We saw a huge sale in 9.8 for $1,825 this week. That's up from an average of just 700. A 9.6 cross double digit selling at 1,075, which was up from just 350 in June. Both of those are record breaking prices for this book. 
It's also worth noting that this book has a very rare newsstand edition. We heard a raw copy sold for $1,000 in the private market. Comic fam, this is why you got to use that Code Tom 101 over on Key Collector Comics, an app that's available both on iPhones and Androids. It's going to unlock a free one-week subscription, and you are going to be able to keep up on all this stuff that we're talking about. And I want to give a big shout-out to Analysis X. We actually have the writer who has decided to want to stay anonymous, actually kind of introducing himself in today's list. What do you think about this, Jem? I like the little at X kind of tag he got going on there. That's right. You know, we got to have our peeps in the community sourcing stuff. And this is one of the cool parts about this list. There is private sales data that is being sourced for the community here. And this is exclusive to this one particular category on Key Collector Comics. All right, enough of all these new characters, next generation heroes. Let's get back to the basics, back to the blue chip Marvel keys. What do we got for number four on the list? Oh, we got the new team, Giant Size X-Men issue number one, Shattering Records. This is the second time this book has made its way onto this list in the last couple months because we were reporting 9.8 record breakers at $15,000. Now, before I blow the community's mind with new records, let's kind of take a little bit of a, you know, a history look at past prices because this book like other x-men keys has continued to impress collectors across the board during 2016 we saw giant size x-men hitting on average sixty five hundred dollars in 2017 ten thousand dollar average sales just a couple months ago we were reporting on a staggering new record breaker at fifteen thousand dollars now we are here to report because of the comic leak summer auction a new 9.8 liter selling for a new sixteen thousand two hundred and fifty seven dollars in that time period, we saw other X-Men keys jump in value as well. A Hulk 181 and 9.8 went from $17,000 to $28,000. An X-Men 1 and 7.0 went from $8,000 to $16,000. Clearly, collectors are focusing on blue chip comics yet again. And I think this really has to do with the ebbs and flows of the market and in particular pandemic in recent times. You know, we have seen the introduction of newsstands and later printings be a constant conversation introduced to this channel after two years, really more than they have ever been. And now we are seeing collectors starting to revert back to those classic comic books. All right, guys, number three on the list. We were talking about this book before it hit the list. It made the list last week and is here again at number three. We're talking about that Young Avengers 1, the Wizard World VIP CGC 9.5 edition. First of all, it's a huge key issue in itself. First appearance of the Young Avengers. But this rare, coveted, numbered edition, we're seeing a lot of sales and a lot of movement. Let's take a look at some of these numbers. On Saturday, we had a $3,000 sale, just $51 shy of the all-time record for this book. We've heard about private sales in the $2,800 to $3,000 range this week. I personally have been lurking on the CGC boards, and I happen to see somebody list this, and sure enough, somebody bought it shortly after it was listed. Oh, you saw that sell in real time? I saw this sale in real time. Oh my gosh, that happened quick, man. And they are being listed for some high numbers. Like we thought this book would move quick and would move up in price rapidly, but I didn't think it would be to this extent. Dealers are fishing right now, man. They're throwing out $5,000 bin prices on eBay. We have one that's sitting at $12,000 saying that it is a, a great investment opportunity. So they're trying to see if somebody's going to bite. Yo, our pal Analyst X did some digging, and he actually says, and I'll quote here, that they've determined $12,000 is actually an incredibly bad investment. I, I dig the honesty. See, we don't just push you to buy and spend a lot of money. Uh, key Collector app saying, don't spend $12,000 on this book. But what I thought was interesting about it is that these are numbered. We know there's 285, but the one that's up there for 12 grand, it says on the label, it's number 24 out of 285. So we see stuff like that in the statue community, these low edition numbers, one out of a thousand or whatever. That's coming into play here. What if somebody has number one out of 285? It'll probably sell for a premium. Similar to that newsstand effect, only at play in a very different way. They're actually numbered. Low printing matters to collectors, especially on these modern books, and it's showcasing now more than ever. Just like at number two on this list, 
I got to be real. I was surprised to see it here. I saw that TMNT issue one was making the list at number two when I first glanced at the hot 10 list. But I scrolled to the very bottom right away because I like to see the newcomers. I like to see who's going to earn their way above the others to those top spots. I was surprised to see that it wasn't the first print that's making its way onto our list today. No, we got the second print of issue number one. Yeah, it's not surprising to see second printings. I, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a third printing jump on here. It's going to happen when that first print gets out of reach, man. We're seeing huge sales there, so collectors are going to go to the next best thing, which is why the second printing is heating up. Okay, I completely agree with you there, Jem, because if you look at the numbers, whoo, is the market moving quick? We have a 3-0 and a 4-0 breaking records of this comic book. Like, let that sink in. Low-grade copies. A 3-0 would traditionally go for just above $300. A mid-grade copy of this book would go for right around $450, $500 just a couple months ago. And we're here to report two new records, a 3-0 breaking the $1,300 mark and a 4-0 selling for $1,350. And Jem, you were right about that third print because it's hitting, on average, $800 for raw copies. To put in perspective, a 9.4 had a previous record for a third print at $550, and we are seeing that record broken in June at $1,800. Not even Amazing Fantasy 15 has maintained the strength in sales numbers. This is more akin to an Action Comics number one. This is a fluke in the market. Yeah, man, this has always been one of those books that no matter what has gone up in value, regardless of what's going on in the movies, the TV shows, the toys, it's always been an indie book. Got to keep in mind, it's an independently published book with a small print run for a beloved franchise. So it makes total sense. I'm glad to see it on the list. The Turtles transcend comic books, comic fam. And it's for this reason, Jem, why I had to take TMNT issue number 109 to print. That's right. We have teamed up for the first time with one of my favorite cover artists, John Boy Myers. And if you join the mystery mail call this month, you will have a chance of getting one of two different variants that we made for this title. That's right, we have a color version and a black and white version, an homage to Paul Smith's classic Wolverine cover from X-Men number 173. Yeah, I really like the black and white cover too with the red background. It kind of reminds me of the original Turtles run, which was just black and white. I'm glad you like it, Jem. And what do you think of that vertical text? We are actually the first ones to take that TMNT logo and change it. I can't believe John Boy got that approved. No, that looks dope for real. Link in the description to join the community. And, Jem, hit him with the hottest comic book in the world. All right, let's not talk about how is Miles Morales still number one on this list, but why. Before we jump into it, though, make sure you're subscribed to this channel because we do this list every single week. And jump over to my channel as well if you want to see statue reviews, omnibus, and weekly comic book reviews. As far as staying number one on this list, Miles Morales faced his toughest challenge yet. DC fandom. DC fandom did its thing last weekend, and with all those reveals and everything they showed us, this book, Ultimate Fallout 4, the 1 out of 25 Jejevic variant, still continues to outperform. And let's talk about why. Jim, it didn't even shake him this week. We got to go over these numbers, man, because you know it's going to be the newsstand or variant of this issue. And this week, for good reason, it's replacing that newsstand. Yeah, so put it like this. On Saturday, we saw a 9.8 sell for $8,400. So that's a strong sale, close to the all-time record of 9000 We also had some lower-grade sales with astronomical numbers. A 9.2 sold for $2,136. A 9.0 sold for $2,000. And a raw sale at $2,000. $878.36. Somebody is gambling big money to try to get a 9.8 out of that raw book. You could get this book for under $500 raw at one point in this year. Comic fam, you gotta be following us because you know we're gonna be keeping track of all of this stuff. Shout out Analysis X. Shout out Key Collector Comics for keeping the community all informed. And thank you for joining us as always. Stay minty fresh and geek responsibly. Enough 
said. Thanks for joining us today, comic fam. We do have other videos for you to check out. Check out the trending list that we produce every week. And make sure to comment down below. It'll enter you to win this J. Scott Campbell, Spider-Gwen number one. Goodness.